Well, as I mentioned today, congregation, uh, we are uh, starting a new sermon series entitled The Nature and Character of God. And we'll be looking at uh, why it matters for us. And today we're starting with God is love. God is love. And so before we get into the Bible passage today, uh, 1 John chapter 4 we're going to look at. Before we get into that passage, we want to ask ourselves uh, a little bit more about who God is. Uh, who is like the Lord our God? And the answer, of course, is that no one is really like the Lord our God. God is unique in all this world. We, we look at uh, this beautiful graphic that has been provided courtesy of, uh, by gracious permission of Karen Sari uh, from the Infographics Bible, and uh, you can check out her website and the information that she has there. Uh, I've been given permission to recreate the graphic, and, and I'm so grateful uh, for that. But if you look at this, and we'll get into detail as we go along on the sermon series, if you look at this graphic, you can see that there are two sort of halves to how theologians have looked at God's uh, nature and character over the, uh, the hundreds of years since Christ was on this earth. The first sort of character, or the first sort of uh, category uh, on the top of this chart in the blue is the, uh, the nature of God. That is, those things that are unique to God that, that we could never have or duplicate or, or anything like this. This, is, this contains things like God's omniscience, the fact that he knows everything. And God's omnipresence, the, facts, the fact that he is everywhere at once. Those kinds of uh, theologians call them incommunicable uh, attributes of God. And then on the bottom uh, half of the circle, we find in green those things that, that we, we have in some degree or can grow in. God's character. And in here we find things that are relational. Now, of course, some of these things we, we can't have. Uh, we can't be Trinitarian in and of ourselves. We are single individual human beings. But some of the characteristics that flow out of that, his relationality, the fact that he relates with, uh, within himself and within, uh, with other people in this world, uh, those things are very important for us as well. Today, however, we are going to focus on the reality that God is love. God is love. Particularly, we are going to look at 1 John chapter 4. This is a, a key passage in the gospel message for us today. Let us read together what John says in that passage. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in us and, and his love is made complete in us. 
This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us of his spirit, and we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in him, they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. The word of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, this, this statement about God being love is pretty unique in the scriptures. There are only a couple other times in the whole of the New Testament where this kind of structure, God is, fill in the blank, is used. There is one time where John says God is light and in him there is no darkness. And there is another time where the author of Hebrews says that God is a consuming fire. But that specific construction of God is, fill in the blanks, is very rare and very unique. And John uses it here twice in a row. And each time he uses the word agape, the Greek word agape. There, there are at least four different words that we have from Greek that, that we translate as love. And, and that makes it kind of difficult for us. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But here, John uses the word agape. The, the best Greek-English dictionary that I know of, um, that is ancient Greek, biblical Greek-English dictionary, uh, says that agape is the quality of warm regard for and interest in another. Esteem, affection, regard, love without limitations to very intimate relationships, and very seldom in Greek, uh, in general Greek, that is outside of the Bible, uh, of sexual attraction. So it's not really about sexual attraction. It's not about uh, that kind of love. But instead, it is about, uh, it is mostly about this warm regard, esteem, affection, and love. Now, that doesn't necessarily carry the weight that this word really has. When it's uh, specifically, the dictionary goes on to say, when it's specifically of the love of God and Christ to humans, God is the source of love. God is the origin of love, the originator of love. And therefore, God is love. Christians, Christ followers, people who follow Jesus, who are embraced by God's love, are called loved ones. That is, techna agapes. C.S. Lewis has a book called The Four Loves. But before he wrote that book, he wrote letters to a friend, to a lady friend of his, um, to Mrs. Johnson. And he says in that letter, one of these letters dated uh, February the 19th, 1954, he says, so there are four kinds of love. Agape is the best because it is the kind that God has for us. And it is good in all circumstances. I, C.S. Lewis says, I can practice agape to God, to angels, man and beast, to the good and the bad, the old and the young, the far and the near. 
And then he goes on to mention how Jesus said that what we do for the least among us, we do for him. Agape, C.S. Lewis says, is all giving, not getting. In terms of our chart, everything else that we're going to talk about over the next number of weeks flows out of God's love. It is, it is only understandable in terms of God's love, and that even comes in with regards to God's judgment, God's wrath, God's anger. That, too flows out of love. There can be no contradiction between those things. But why does it matter for us? Why does it matter that God is love? In a sense, it actually probably doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is that God, who created us, is worthy of our worship and all glory and honor. He is worthy of that, regardless of his character, because he is the one who created us. It's not like we could say, oh, God is not loving enough, therefore I don't have to worship God. That's, that's not actually the way it works. I know some people feel that way, but God who created us is worthy of our worship and honor and love, regardless of his love. However, it does make a tremendous difference to us. It matters to us because the reality is, is that we wouldn't exist if it wasn't for God's love. God created everything that is and sustains everything that is because he loves. He does that because he loves. It matters because we couldn't be healed from our brokenness without it. The reality is, is that a God who was not love could just sort of wash his hands of us and say, they broke the rules and I'm done with them. It matters because we couldn't have a restored relationship with God or with our fellow human beings without God's love. See, we can't bridge the gap between our brokenness and God's righteousness without God's help without God's love. And so without God's love, <laughs> we're in trouble. It matters to us also because we are God's image bearers. We were designed to love like God. Not that we're very good at it. In order to understand some of this and what love is, we need to look a little bit at, at the meaning of the word love in the Bible. And so I've got a little bit of a video clip for you from the wonderful people at the Bible Project. Uh, watch this first clip and then we'll talk a little bit more about what love is. And he first quoted from the ancient prayer in the Torah called the Shema. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart. So love for God is the most important thing. But then Jesus quickly followed up by saying another command from the Torah was also the most important, to love your neighbor as yourself. So which is the most important, loving God or loving your neighbor? Jesus' answer is yes. To ask the question means you don't get his point. For Jesus, they are two sides of the same coin. Your love for God will be expressed by your love for people and vice versa, they're inseparable. Hopefully that video clip was helpful. A couple things, a few things that came out of that for me as I was watching that video and as I, as I was contemplating this week and preparing this message and studying the scriptures 
is that, first of all, love is not a feeling. Love, as the Bible understands it, is not a feeling. Sometimes it is expressed in our feelings. Often it is expressed in our feelings. But that is not what love ultimately is. It is ultimately selfless. Love is selfless. It is not centered on me, which is tough because a lot of our human love, the things that we talk about in terms of our human love, we're actually, uh, we're actually talking about things that make us feel good. I love this person because they care for me. I love this person because they pay attention to me. They affirm me. They do good things for me. I love these things because they make me feel good. But that is not, that is not what biblical love ultimately is about. It is ultimately, for humans, it is ultimately loving God in words and deeds infinitely more than anything or anyone else. Loving God more than anyone or any else. Anything or anyone else. That means loving God more than my wife. It means loving God more than my children. It means loving God infinitely more than any of them or myself. That's why Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And because of this love that we have for God as we grow in our faith, we learn to love others, to love God's creation, infinitely more than we can in our brokenness. Let's watch again as the Bible Project people unpack that some more, as they look at what it means to love from a human standpoint and informed by what God means. When he says love. For Jesus, love is action. It's a choice that you make to seek the well being of people other than yourself. Jesus also went on to teach that genuine love for God and others means seeking people's well being without expecting anything in return, especially from people who are in difficult situations who can't repay you even if they wanted to. According to Jesus, this kind of generous love reflects the very heartbeat of God. And he took this even further. Jesus said that the ultimate standard of authentic love is how well you treat the person that you can't stand. Or in his words, you shall love your enemy and do good to them, expecting nothing nothing in return. For Jesus, this kind of enemy-embracing love imitates the very character of God himself, agape for us in this. While we were still sinners, the Messiah died for us. Or in the words of the Apostle John, God's own agape was revealed when he sent his one and only son into the world so that through him we could have life. C.S. Lewis talks about this love, this kind of love that comes from from God, and that is a gift. He calls it divine love. And when he's talking about divine love in his book, The Four Loves, he's talking about that agape love. And he says, divine love is gift love. The Father gives all he is and has to the Son, to Jesus. The Son gives himself back to the Father and gives himself to the world, to all of us, and for the world, and for the world, to the Father. And thus gives the world in himself, that is, Jesus giving the world in himself, back to the Father too. Our gift loves, the loves in which we give freely, our gift loves are really God-like. And among our gift loves, those are most God-like, which are boundless and unwearied 
in giving. Brothers and sisters, this is why it matters that God is love. Not only because otherwise we wouldn't exist. Not only because we need his love to heal us in our brokenness. But also because we were created in God's image to love. And being created to love. means so much for how we view this world. Let's look at one more clip from the Bible Project, folks. And then we'll come back together and pray. So Christian faith involves trusting that at the center of the universe is a being overflowing with love for his world, which means that the purpose of human existence is to receive this love that has come to us in Jesus and then to give it back out to others, creating an ecosystem of others-focused, self-giving love. And that's the New Testament meaning of agape love. Father in heaven, thank you so much that you, O oh God, great three in one, triune, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that you are love. Thank you so much that we can get to know you through your scriptures, through your Son, Jesus, through your Holy Spirit living within us, through even the evidences of your presence in the world around us. Help us, O oh God to truly understand more and more your love, who you are. And in understanding that, O oh God, help us to live out the love that we were meant to live. Love for you, first of all, and through the love we have for you, love for your creation, and love for all your people, all your image bearers in this world. Lord, help us to do that in words and in deeds this week and throughout the weeks to come. Lord, in a world where so many people are so hurting and, and often, oh Lord, we confess hurting because of what so supposed Christians, people who claim to be living in Christ's name and doing things in Christ's name, so often claiming that and yet doing things that are not ultimately loving. Lord, forgive us for that and help us to turn and live in love the divine love, the agape love, gift love. Help us and strengthen us in this, we pray. Amen.